Hi, this is the upstairs bathroom from the same job as yesterday. I'm getting ready to pour this floor. So this is a curbless shower. I need about a quarter inch more height on this to get the appropriate pitch to that drain. Because I can't get it down quite flat on the subfloor um, just because of some stuff in the way. So I need about a quarter inch and that will also level this floor out in a minute. But I love pouring leveler over UM. Um, so it basically creates a backer board. And this is spec by Mape. This is their recommendation and approval. So do a thin pour, minimum quarter inch over this. And it creates just a crazy, crazy strong subfloor. Um, one of my favorite methods. So I'm gonna pour this. And then by this afternoon, it should be dry enough for me to Float this down with 335. So a few of the reasons I like pouring over this membrane instead of pouring first and then putting the membrane down. One, I don't have to do a lot of prep to the subfloor. I don't have to prime it. I don't have to fill my joints, anything like that. This handles a lot of that. Uh, two, most levelers, most self-leveling products aren't suitable to go directly over OSB subfloor. There are some out there, um, but not all of them. So the one I'm using, uh, HSL, is not specifically recommended to go directly over plywood, but it can be poured over UM. So I can use a medium grade self-leveler, which is still plenty good, um, and achieve crazy strong pour. So also, I just like it. I like the way it feels. I like how this solidifies the leveler. It basically takes the place of putting down metal last, which is what um, many self-levelers still recommend. So, unless you get the uncoupling benefits. If you end up pouring too thick over it, I think you lose some of the uncoupling benefits, but really, um, I think the, uh, the strength that this provides outweigh um, some of those benefits. You just gotta kinda do your research and make your own decision on what works for you. I built some dams yesterday that's just go board and fence that I'll bust those off later. Um, spray foam around the edges and just set my uh, little height gauges with my laser. That's how I like to do it. And uh, I think this will take me about seven bags. So. There we go, seven bags. Hit all my points. Ghetto spike roller works just as good, easier to clean, easier to drag around in your tool bucket, and it has multiple uses. So let that dry for a few hours, go do a second coat of waterproofing downstairs, come do that pan. Okay, it's been about two hours since I poured this. It's nice and hard, popped off my dams. I've got about an inch and an eighth right here. I love this rapid recess system, but it really just barely, barely gives you enough slope, um, you know, proper slope. So usually when I do these, I end up floating the floor up a teeny bit more. Even with pushing this drain clear to the plywood, it's just, it's like the absolute minimum slope and I don't feel comfortable with that. I want a solid quarter inch per foot. So I've got three quarter inch slope basically from drain to there now, which is a little under three feet, so I'm good with that. So, 330 fast pan. This is something I've been doing. Uh, Mape doesn't necessarily sanction it. They have not told me I can't do it, but this is this is do at your own risk kind of thing. I've done a bunch of them. I'm comfortable with it, uh, confident in it. So, don't take my word for it though. So the reason I like 330 for this application is because it's highly modified, super fiber reinforced, very dense, very strong. I've used it on tons of different applications over drywall, over denshield, over plywood, and I have yet to have any of it ever crack on me. So that's why I feel confident in using it here for this application. So contrary to, you know, normal mud work, I don't put plastic down under my lap. Because I'm going so thin, I want it to actually bond a little bit to the wood there. Normally you put plastic down to make it like a, to isolate it from the floor. Um, 
where we're going so thin, I just, I would prefer that it seep in and kind of bond into all these grooves and stuff just to make it that much stronger. Uh, that's just my opinion, that's how I do it. You know, again, don't take my word for it, I'm just showing my process. So I just realized I don't have any ABS glue, so I am going to make some hard screeds and while those dry, I'm gonna go grab some glue. But with the 330, it's so gooey, you can't just screed it like dry pack. You really need a hard edge to ride your screed on. So I've got my level perimeter here, just nice and hard. And then I set, screwed a little pitch block in the corner, exact same height as these two corners, these three corners. I'm gonna mix, it, mix up some 330 and set this cap strip into it. Um, and then by the time I get back, that'll be nice and hard. And then when I go to screed this, I'm just riding my edge on something hard all the way around. So really, you're not gonna be able to pack it and carve it freehand. You really have to be dragging your straight edge on something where it's just gonna totally fuck it up. So I learned that the hard way. It's just how you gotta do it with this stuff, so. So I'll mix this stuff up kind of stiff because it's usually pretty runny. Just make a little mound and then I press that cap strip into it with my level. Uh, I've got to work really quick. This is already starting to firm up on me. So that's how I'm setting my rails. You can try to do it without the cap strip and just press it in with your level. It's really hard, it's really messy. It's hard to get it to, to you know, be as perfect as you need it. So this is what I'm choosing to use. I've also used foam board or float strips pressed into it. Uh, basically anything hard like that to give you a hard edge to screed off of. All right, I got some ABS glue, glue in my drain. These rails are nice and firm. Uh, I mix the first batch up kind of runny. You can see this is super runny and gooey. Not like floating it down with that much. That drain is pressed as tight as I can get it. There's about a quarter inch of mud under that. And you gotta be sure to really burn the first layer into the last really good. Laugh always has a two inch overlap on the seam, so it's pretty standard. I think laugh just makes everything stronger. This step is crazy strong on its own, but laugh makes it even more stronger. So, I mean, more strong. Excuse my grammar. Um, and you're just gonna wanna spread this around. I'll mix up a couple more bags really quick, fill it all in, and then just start carving it with my speed. Uh, you're not really carving it yet, you're just kind of dragging it and sliding it. And then once it turns up, you carve it. So, gotta move quick. All right, so you can see this is a big gooey mess. I use that end of my screed and not the flat end because the flat end catches it and drags it. So, first order of business is just get it worked around. It doesn't have to be pretty, just screed it rough. Okay, just kind of go along. It in, brighten that straight edge on the drain and your perimeter. Make sure it's all lower than that point between your drain and your perimeter. I'm gonna get that all done. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning it up. Then, after that firms up a teeny bit in like 15 minutes, I'm gonna mix up a really thin batch and just screed it around the whole top of it really nice, and that's gonna make it pretty and flat. So, gotta work quick. Super messy, dries super fast. Super gooey, use at your own risk. All right, now I mixed up, mixed up a thinner batch and I just kind of spread it on there. And now I'm just taking my screws and just going like that, filling all the little low spots and imperfections. This is just gonna roll right off the screen and fill those all in. Uh, kind of hard to film and do this and then kind of racing the clock here. So I'll coat that whole thing. Then about 15 minutes when it starts to fire off, I'll clean it up with my flat trowel really good. Run a straight edge around it again to make sure it's all nice and flat. And uh, that's kind of how you do it. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes since I finished that. I just got everything cleaned up. And now um, you can see it's still a teeny bit soft, but it's almost getting to where it's firm. Mixed up a really, runny tiny little batch and then I'm just carefully troweling it across the surface like that and then I will take 
My straight edges one last time. And just screed all the way around. See how it just rolls up on there. You don't really even need to like move it back and forth. You really just drag it across. That'll give you a nice smooth finish. Then when that firms up, I'll rub it down and clean it up. It'll be done. Okay, it's been in about 20 more minutes. This is almost firm, still a little bit gooey. So at this point I'll take and wet my flat trowel down and then just very, very lightly smooth the surface off. And that'll just kind of make sure there's no bumps or fibers sticking out. And Tomorrow, I mean, actually, in about 30 minutes, this will be hard as a rock, but tomorrow it'll just be a bomber. Um, and that is how I do a 330 fast triple shower thin application float. Again, do this at your own risk. Don't say Tarkus told you it was okay, even though it is, but you gotta do it right. So. Good luck, have fun.